Hey guys, this episode we are going to be talking about how to build mobile responsive navigation in your Rails apps using Turbo. So let's take a look at an example. Jumpstart Pro's documentation has a very long list of uh, pages that you can read up on the docs and you can jump between them of course. But on mobile we want to be able to uh, compress that and if we kept that as the massive list of things that we had on the desktop then you would be scrolling through all that before you get to the main content or we'd have to put it after the main content which would be confusing. So instead on mobile we hide all of that and we replace it with the select box. And this allows us to jump between those pages just like we do on desktop but by using a select tag. This technique is really useful for any navigation like that, for tabs, for other things, vertical navigation, horizontal navigation, you name it. So we're gonna talk about how this works and how we can implement this in our Rails apps. And I have a very simple list of um, navigation items here, which are just a UL and we are going to refactor that. So here in my layout, I have render shared navigation and all of the navigation lives in this partial. So this partial is what keeps track of um, all of the pages and the URLs that we want to have in the navigation. And this is really what we want to display on desktop only. So we're gonna use some Tailwind CSS, but of course you can use any CSS framework you want with this, but we can set the class here to be hidden by default on mobile. So the way that Tailwind works, the primary one is going to be mobile and then up. Um, so then from here we can say, this on small should be a block element or inline block or whatever you need to display that so that when we go open up the responsive test here, we can see that on mobile, uh, I gotta refresh the page, on mobile uh, that will be hidden but then on small and up, it is going to be visible. So that is where we can jump between the two. So then on mobile, we need to implement that select tag. So here we need to create a select tag. We need to have some options for that select tag. And the select tag doesn't really need a name for this, so we're gonna say nil. And then of course our options here. And if we implement this, we will have the start to that, um, but we wanna also set this up so that it is uh, visible normally, and then on small and up, it is hidden. So we'll have hidden, small colon hidden in Tailwind CSS to uh, resize that properly. So that is going to get us uh, our select box, there's nothing in it yet, but as we jump between the sizes, small and, um, and mobile, then we will see that be replaced, and that is step number one. Now, step number two is gonna be setting up those actual uh, navigate, um, navigation items. So we can say, let's make an array in our Ruby code here, and this can be an array of arrays, so we'll have home, this will go to the root path. We will have uh, another array for calendar. This will go to our calendar path. We will have projects, projects path. And tasks goes to tasks path. And last, announcements will go to announcements path. All right, so now we have this uh, navigation as a Ruby array so that we can reuse that in both places. So instead of having an array, empty array here on mobile, we can have this uh, select box with those items in it. So if we refresh, what we wanna see is those items um, are rendered out there. Now we're gonna want uh, to not just pass the items in directly, because if we look at this HTML, inspect, we'll see that it just put that array in there directly. So we wanna convert this to options for select. So in order to do that, we will say options for select, pass in the items, that will take those array of items and use the first item as the visible text for the user and then the value of that option tag inside of there will be the item uh, path. 
So here in our select now we can expand this and we'll see the values are slash for the root path, slash calendar, projects, tasks, announcements, and so on. All of those work perfect. And um, you know, now show us those different things. Clicking on them doesn't do anything yet, but let's first fix the uh, desktop navigation to match using some Ruby. So what we'll do here is we'll say uh, items.each do item, and we can break that down even further. Instead of getting the array as item, we can say um, text and path. Then we can use that to generate the list item with the link to, with the text and the path, and we can close that off. And by doing it that way, we will now dynamically list each one of those items as a list item with a link to that text and that URL uh, or path. So here we can refresh exactly the same thing and they all navigate to the right place. So the last step of making our mobile responsive navigation is to actually make this navigate when we choose one of these items. And the way we can do that is we can go into the select tag and add some JavaScript. Now, normally you might reach for uh, stimulus for this, which would definitely work. You could say the change event for the select tag uh, triggers a method in the stimulus controller and we have to go to find that and everything. That's a little too much JavaScript for what I want. So we can do this all inline super easy. So we can say on change, to add a on change event right here directly in the um, HTML, and this will run some JavaScript that's in a string here. So we can say turbo visit this dot selected options, grab the first one and call the value on it. Now let's just change this turbo visit to a chain uh, console dot log, and when we change that item, we should in our JavaScript console. Let's clear this out. We should see that going to each one of those prints out the URL that we have selected. So that's perfect. If we choose the exact same item, it doesn't fire the change event because it didn't change. It's currently the selected item, so there's no reason to change that. And uh, this is going to then let us know every URL that we have selected. So then we can go back and change that to our turbo visit, which will use the turbo JavaScript, which has been registered on the window. The reason why Turbo is registered on the window and not local in your JavaScript is because for uh, Turbo native like iOS and Android, they're gonna need to be able to talk to Turbo on a global level anyways. Um, and so this is something that we can just access anywhere in our JavaScript, Turbo dot whatever. Um, and you can use this for plenty of other things, but by changing that to say Turbo visit, now when we refresh, we can go to calendar, We'll jump to the calendar and projects and tasks and announcements. Now, the thing that you might be confused about is why does it keep saying home every time we change to that page? Well, we need to tell options for select which option we've actually selected. So if we pass in, um, and actually let me just pull up the options for select uh, docs for you. Options for select. Uh, and this is grouped options for select. Let me find options for select. There we go. Um, the first argument is the list of items. And so if you give it an array of an array, so you can also give it a hash of keys and values and it will use those. Um, then you can also go through here and you can say uh, the selected item is whatever. And by default, it will be nil. But if we tell it, hey, let's use request.path, which is going to use the rack request or the action dispatch request um, path, so it will have that path in the URL, we can tell it which page we are currently on. So here, if we go to calendar, we can refresh and it will be correctly on the calendar. If we go to projects, it will correctly select the projects there. We can even jump directly in our browser to the other pages and it will select that correctly. Um, also, we can say foo equals bar and the match is still going to work because request.path in Rails is going to give us just the path, not the query parameters um, and also not the anchor. So we are able to match on that server side and render that correctly so that the select box is always selected as we want. And now we have 
a full navigation on desktop and on mobile we have a very simple select box that a user can just choose what page they want to jump to and voila we are off to the races now i really really like this solution because we can reuse the navigation even though we have to basically generate two different uis uh, in html for the different views of this that's okay it's really not that much extra code it's really one line of uh, a select and the options for it and that's it and what's really magical is that turbo visit being able to do this inline so we don't have to have extra javascript and extra files to manage in our javascript the navigation right here can handle that all together so this works really really well and is super duper short that's one method and uh one method call in our javascript and other than that, we've just uh, made our navigation rendering agnostic. You could pass this in as a local variable instead to your navigation so that you could pass in those navigation items and then reuse this partial for navigation anywhere in your application and have these items changed out automatically. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, this is some of the stuff that you will have to learn to build really good Hotwire applications that have turbo native iOS and Android support. Navigation being responsive on mobile is a crucial thing. And uh, there's just some great ways of tackling some of these navigation items uh, like this with turbo and with like Tailwind CSS makes that super easy. All we had to do is say, this big one is hidden, but then displayable on small screens. And then uh, the select tag is hidden on small screens and up, and that's it. So this is super duper cool. I really, really uh, like how simple this approach is, and hopefully it gives you some ideas of how to implement uh, more mobile responsive functionality in your Rails apps. That's it. I will talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.